Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're going to be going through the voltage cutoff of our radio controlled speed controls. Now this is not just going to be limited to any specific radio controlled vehicle. It is essentially going to be wide open for all of the radio controlled vehicles that exist out there within our hobby. In addition to this, this video is not just going to be for those that are new to the hobby, but also for those that want to experience more of the high performance sector or area of our hobby. A great example would be the guys who like straight line speed, whether you're running your radio control car or boat for a couple passes to make that straight line max speed pass. So stay tuned for that. It's going to come closer to the end of this video. Let's get started and talk about exactly what a voltage cutoff is. Essentially the way it works is as soon as we plug our radio control battery packs as a power source into our electronic speed controls, that speed control figures out how many cells are connected to it. This is the most common method used for the majority of the speed controls that are out there on the market, but it's not just limited to the one that we're going to be talking about today. Once that speed control identifies the amount of cells as a cell count within the battery pack that you've plugged in, it is then going to be able to set that minimum threshold threshold it's going to use for the voltage cutoff. You may have noticed as you plug that battery pack into your speed control, this is followed up by a bunch of beeps. Now the first bunch of beeps that you get are essentially the speed control telling you the cell count that you have within that pack. This is something that you, the user, should be verifying every single time. If you're plugging in a four cell lithium polymer battery pack to your speed control, you should listen to those first four beeps and know that your speed control has actually recognize that the pack that you plugged in is a four cell pack. After these beeps are complete, the speed control typically follows up with an arming tone so that you know that radio control vehicle is ready to be run. Now let's head over to the whiteboard to discuss the next few topics we're going to be talking about in terms of our voltage cutoff. Our first question is, why do we have a voltage cutoff within our electronic speed controls? Well, there's a couple points here up on the board, and that first one is going to be talking about protecting our lithium polymer battery packs. Our lithium polymer battery packs are subjected to all kinds of lifespan risks if we decide to overcharge them. In order to prevent us from over discharging them, we have this feature built right into our equipment so that it prevents us from doing this exact action. As a result, our lithium polymer battery packs are going to be happier and we're going to be happier because we don't need to continuously buy battery packs every couple months because we destroy them. So the next point goes on and talks about safety of our battery packs, safety of us. So essentially what happens when we go and discharge beyond a certain threshold within our battery packs, our lithium polymer battery packs, we enter this region where the internal resistance is actually going to shoot in the positive direction. It's going to shoot and increase our internal resistance. As this happens and we continue to pull the same amount of power out of our packs, we're going to get an increased amount of heat. And it is this increased amount of heat that can lead to all kinds of things that we don't want to have happen, like fires. So this is the two main points on why we have this voltage cutoff built within our systems. Now let's talk about the general types of voltage cutoffs that we'll see within our radio control speed controls, depending on the manufacturer that we've purchased the speed control from. So the two general types of cutoffs that we have is known as a hard cutoff and the second one is a soft cutoff. Now the hard cutoff within our system is going to essentially do exactly as it sounds. It's going to pull all the power out from our system so that we are operating with zero power. In this case, in order to reset the system while we're actually running that vehicle, we're going to have to throttle all the way back to zero and then feed some power in. This is the general way to get that system kicked back up and going. Now if you do encounter another voltage cutoff, you're going to continuously have to repeat this function. Now our second cutoff is known as a soft voltage cutoff and essentially what happens here is it's a, operating in a lot different way than our hard voltage cutoff. What happens with our soft voltage cutoff is the power is reduced by a very small amount. And then what tends to happen in general is that that speed control is going to sort of pulse the motor so that you are able to identify that there's a problem with your system. If you're flying a plane, this is your chance to land is essentially the message that that speed control is trying to give you with that sort of pulsation or the motor RPM going up and down in a very frequent type of way. 
So now let's go ahead and talk about some of my own personal preference as to when I decide to use a hard voltage cutoff versus a soft voltage cutoff. So I'm going to use a hard voltage cutoff when I'm operating a radio controlled vehicle with a low drain rate. This might be something similar to a rock crawler or an off-road vehicle that does not pull all that much power. Now the reason why I operate a low drain rate radio controlled vehicle with a hard cutoff is because I don't want to end up pulling power out of that that system in a very slow manner using a soft voltage cutoff. Essentially what I want to have happen is to hard cut the power so that I bring that radio control vehicle in and that's the end of my run. Now the more important reason as to why I use a hard cutoff is when there is no risk subjected to my radio control vehicle or anyone or thing around me. So a radio control car, I don't care if the power of that radio control car is completely removed. If it's removed, I can still steer the vehicle and come to a coasting stop somewhere that is safe and out of the way of everybody else. However, it's not the same for the next example that we're going to get into. So I like to use a soft cutoff when we have the opposite scenario playing in. This is when I have a high drain rate radio control vehicle. And then the second one, the more important one, is when there is risk presented to my radio controlled vehicle or people or things around me. So really what this boils down to is my radio controlled airplanes. I do not like to have a hard cutoff present in those radio control airplanes. I can get an airplane out at a distance away from me where I can't quite hear it if there's some other noise happening around me. In this case, I don't want to have the power completely removed and I don't know exactly what's happening with that radio controlled airplane at that exact moment. That could lead me as the pilot of that airplane in a panic state, panic mode, and not allow me to make the right decision to reapply no throttle and get that throttle back up so I can reactivate that radio control vehicle. Now let's talk about some of the challenges that we face in other areas of our radio control hobby. This is going to go back to what we talked about near the beginning of this video, where if you're a guy who is going and trying to build up a nice radio control car for those high speed passes, this is essentially going to apply to you. So whenever we have a voltage cutoff set within our system, this is based off of the loaded voltage and this is very important because the loaded voltage is going to change based off of the type of radio control vehicle that we have. If you're pulling a lot of power you're going to have more of a greater chance to have a bigger voltage drop and if you're not pulling so much power you're not going to have much of a voltage drop to worry about. So here's a, a graph showing us voltage on the y-axis and then time along the x-axis. So let's say we start off with that fully charged battery pack doesn't matter how many cells are within it but each cell is at 4.2 volts. Then we start to go and apply some throttle and we run ourselves down to a loaded voltage of just under the 3.2 volt mark. However, our voltage cutoff is actually set for 3.2 volts. What's gonna happen here is your speed control is gonna recognize that you've hit this threshold, this minimum threshold of voltage, and it's gonna to start to apply whatever cutoff that your speed control ends up using. In this case, you're probably not gonna have the performance that you wish to have. It's not a problem with the pack. This is a fully charged pack, and it's a good quality pack. It's a brand new battery pack, but you're operating it in an aggressive way that sags the voltage down a significant way. Now, for some of you, you might be wondering, how is this possible? Well, take a look at this graph. This graph represents a tremendous amount of of power being pulled upwards of over 300 amps from a very high quality battery pack, one of the best performing battery packs that you can get on the market. And you can see that the voltage drop here was quite significant. We're seeing under three volts per cell, which is gonna be somewhere you know, down in this region within the graph that we drew up here on the board. So this is the perfect example of what I'm talking about here. And yes, that was a high speed run of a radio control vehicle on six cell lithium polymer battery pack hitting upwards of over 115 miles per hour, pulling, like I said, over 300 amps. So in that case, we have a problem with our voltage cutoff. Now the best thing to do in this case, believe it or not, is to remove that voltage cutoff. If you are looking for absolute max performance, you're going to have to remove that voltage cutoff so it does not 
become a factor within your high performance setup. Now this is how we can get away with it. Whenever you're operating these types of vehicles, it is important that you're only making a couple passes. You make one pass in one direction, you make another pass in the other direction, and that's it. You bring that vehicle in, and that's the end of your run. The reason why you do this is because you don't want heat building up in the motor, the speed control, and also your battery pack. You are not gonna be operating this battery pack so that it gets down to its 80% discharge state you're going to end up bringing that in well before you ever get the chance to get to that point. So this is why we can afford to remove our voltage cutoff within these specific types of applications. So now the last thing to talk about, if you're setting up a vehicle for the first time and you don't know where to set that voltage cutoff, my recommendation is to start at 3.4 volts per cell. What you wanna do is start at this value and then test how this is working for you. Essentially what you want is you want to have a voltage cutoff that is going to keep your battery pack safe and leave a little bit of capacity remaining within those cells. At the same time, you don't wanna overdo it. If you end up having a voltage cutoff, instead of this saying 3.2 and you select a 3.8, you're not gonna have a lot of usable capacity within that pack. So you're trying to pick something that is reasonable. If you can't discharge that pack by at least around the 80% mark, you should lower that voltage cutoff value. That's essentially the balance between where you're gonna have that cutoff. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it so already. This way I'll be able to see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.